All right, we will get things underway. Thank you guys for coming out here first and foremost. Uh, we'll, uh, I'm gonna start with, with RJ, man. Uh, a, a solid, solid ride for you. Ended up uh, in the overall and uh, really kind of showing out in that second moto, man. Walk us through what was clicking for you here today at Ironman. Um, really just the suffer. I, I mean, I haven't been racing all summer. Um, and yeah, I probably, and no one really expected that today. Um, and honestly, I, I didn't even really think about it, but most likely that was my last 250 pro outdoor race. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was just that, but uh, I, it, if you guys actually seen kind of the last couple of weeks, you would not have even, I shouldn't have even done that. Um, so, yeah, just a little bit extra grit. Kind of felt like I had a chance at, you know, landing on the box there late in the moto, and um, yeah, I had a couple guys come back to me. So. If there was any chance, I was going to take it, and yeah, I did, and kind of stoked to end it on a you know, third overall. It's a good day, man. Uh, chance Hymas will go to you next, buddy. Uh, I want to go back uh, a few weeks ago, Unadella. You had an absolute perfect ride going. You had a gnarly get off. Uh, it got to the point where it was one of those crashes where we were just concerned about you, wanted to make sure you were all right. You fast forward a couple of weeks here, man, at Iron Man, showing up, showing out. Great ride today. Yeah, thank you. Uh, definitely uh, was pretty blessed to walk away from that. Um, just a couple, couple of bruises and a burn, but uh, yeah, it was everything was clicking that day, and I was just trying to get back on the podium. You know, just the last half of the season, it's been rough for me, so a bit inconsistent. But I mean, yeah, last t last couple weekends was good. Um, yeah, fumbled the first moto last weekend at Buds, you know, but yeah, nice to end the season with the podium. You know, pretty glad the summer's over. But yeah, it was a big boost in my in my career so far. Best I've ridden in my career, and yeah, it's it's been fun battling these guys all summer and just run up front again. But yeah, this weekend was probably the two most intense motos all year. So yeah, what a way to cap it off, I guess. <laughs> I like it. Uh, uh, Eli, we'll move on to you, buddy. Uh, a four fifties. We welcomed you back a week ago. Today, specifically that second moto, this looked like the Eli Tomac we are used to seeing. A little more like yourself out there, making passes in the fight, a lot more confidence, and it showed with a podium. Yeah, that was nice to have two good motos and not just one. So, um, kind of got a similar start in, bo in both races there, and then, uh, yeah, work my was able to make a pass on, uh, on Hunter that time to get to third. But uh, overall, happy with just having two solid motos and getting back in the game. Dan Beaver, NBC Sports for Eli. Uh, how important was this, uh, this podium overall to build that momentum going into the SMX playoffs? Well, it's, it's definitely nice just to get gate drops, period. Um, I, I noticed just being away uh, from the summer is like you, no matter what you do at home and how, however hard you train, you don't, you don't simulate those, that first lap in those first few corners it seemed pretty wild to me in the sprint speed i'm like okay i need to you know up my game on those on the first lap there so it's good to get those gate drops in because i'm sure smx is going to be even more of a sprint and for chase uh i'm sorry for chance um any worries about the the couple of get offs the crashes spring creek uh unadilla and that stalling your momentum or is that just part of being a young gun on a new bike uh, this year. Yeah, um, I don't I don't bounce like I used to, you know. I don't really have that kid energy, but uh, no, it's it's good. I got one weekend off to bounce back a little bit, you know, recover. But I mean, overall, it's it definitely uh, took a little bit out of me. But I'm starting to get back to 100% again, and hopefully go into SMX 100%. Scott Yarjo, Moto Now blog. RJ, can you elaborate more on your plans for next year? Um, yeah, I said it at the end of Supercross, what I wanted to do. Uh, most likely that's what's going to happen. I'll be defending on the West Coast on the 250. Um, if I'm up for it, select 450 rounds on the opposite coast, and then um, hopefully making my full-time debut outdoors 450 next year. All right. And Chance, we've seen you take a huge, huge leap this, this summer. In Supercross, you're more like five to ten kind of range. Do you expect the momentum to carry over to SMX? Like, what can you do to improve on the Supercross style? Yeah, I mean, I came into outdoors a lot more prepared than I did for Supercross. Um, Supercross, I probably only had a month on the bike after my knee surgery, and definitely a prep preparation was not uh, not where it needed to be coming into Supercross. So, 
I think after outdoors, confidence is pretty high right now and uh, getting back to 100% healthy and figuring some stuff out with my body. So I think SMX is, it's going to be good for me, you know, especially confidence wise. Like I was pretty, I was pretty down in the dumps after Supercross as, I mean, I feel like everyone would think, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. I missed out on it last year with knee surgery, but I mean, I'm excited. It's different form of racing for me, so it should be fun. And Eli, is there any element of coming out early to race motocross that was trying to show yourself, prove yourself for destinations if possible? Is that a thought in your mind? Oh, I mean, if, if I would have been the number two guy, I mean, yeah, I would have uh, said sign me up, but uh, AP was, was the number two guy. So, um, yeah, it was, it was really all of that, just getting back into motocross, knowing it, I'm going to race in 25. And then, I mean, I signed up to race it this year, so it's just, it's good just to get racing. Mitch Kundreth, Racer X, so we'll start with Chance. Obviously, you came up short of the championship here, but it felt like you've taken such a step in the last year. Uh, obviously, you had that knee injury last summer, but do you feel like, I guess, you know, how can you keep going and just take such a big leap for next year and really be a race winner each and every weekend and uh, really fight for championship, both Supercross and for pro, pro motocross? Yeah, this year was big for me just to get the experience. I missed out on a lot last year, so this being my first full season. Um, just trying to take everything from it. Obviously, my goal is to win every weekend, but you take what you can get and you move on. So just trying to learn as much as I can and lean in on Hunter the last few weekends, just you know, taking it you know, a little bit slower and just trying to take it all in and you know, learn as much as possible. So trying to learn everything and work the kinks out this year so next year we can be fighting for titles. That's the goal. And then for Eli, obviously, it looked like the speed was there, uh, both motos today. How did you make gains in the last week? Was it just, you know, being back at the races that kind of rose? You know, how did, I guess, how did you make gains so much? Uh, it seemed like your speed was there throughout most, most of both motos compared to last week. How did you make those gains in such a short time? Uh, we did make a fork change, so had a different fork this weekend. Um, that was nice. So, yeah, you're right. Like, I had the speed of, of the front group, at least, was able to see them this weekend and, and be right there. So that was good. And then... Um, yeah, just good starts, just a better day. And then one quick one for you and RJ. You guys have raced here a lot. What did you think of the new start, uh, the wood section, just some of the track changes we've seen uh, pr compared to previous years? Uh, I enjoyed it. It just, uh, the whole track has a lot of cool elements to it. I mean, it was, the woods was a little bit sketchy, but at the same time, it was something different. It had a cool little flow to it. And uh, I did almost wash out in there, and then, you know, guys were crashing, but at the same time, uh, it's it's a fun track. It's it's a technical track. Yeah, it's same. I mean, I I enjoyed the layout. Uh, this first turn I felt like was much better than what it usually is, or at least a start. Um, I would say that someone riding with a wrist injury, these back kind of dips, double things gotta go. But uh, if it was normal, I mean, we'd be fine. I I enjoy this place. Jim Kimball with Motocross Action. Uh, question for Eli and RJ. You both returned a week ago, and you finished very credible. You had good finishes, I think, in many people's eyes. I'm not sure you were satisfied, but how are you feeling now about getting on the podium and, and just your second race back after a long layoff? Uh, I mean, I'm in a much different position than Eli, He's a multi-time champ, but just for me to come back and um, you know, get gate drops in, like, I mean, yeah, I'm stoked on today. Like, you say I'm not, but I, I, I am. Um, I was not supposed to go out there and do that. Like, literally, I was supposed to be here to get gate drops in and um, just try to be better for, you know, Charlotte here in a couple of weeks. So, to uh, pull that off and um, kind of suffer through it, like, that was a huge win for our team. I mean, I, like, you always want to win no matter what. And at the same time, though, you have to be somewhat realistic. You know, these guys are finally tuned up right now and, and they're in the race mode so um, yeah pretty pretty satisfied with the day getting that third uh, just a quick question for Chance Chance you've really proven to be a race winner contender do you think next year can be a really big year for you I think so you know um, the way I'm going right now and uh, got a lot of plans coming up for this off season and ideas on what we can do to be better for next year and just kind of taking in the knowledge, what we've learned so far this year with my body and, you know, putting our best foot forward going into Supercross next year and uh, 
trying to even out everything for my for me and my training. So, yeah, um, obviously still have a lot to learn. I mean, still only my first year. So, hopefully, uh, yeah, I got some good people in my corner, and you know, hopefully going to next year um, even better than where we're at right now. Mitch again, Thracer X, uh, chance to stay with you. Uh, talk about that second moto. I think Hayden and Tom were kind of going back and forth, and I think they might have slid enough each other up uh, down enough for you to catch up to them and join the battle. You know, just talk about what that was uh, like going back and forth with those guys. Yeah, it was intense. Um, I was just a little bit off the first few laps, and yeah, then battle and brought me back into it and got in the flow. Um, it allowed me to find some lines that I ended up passing Tom with, and uh, Hayden was riding really good. So was Tom. Um, first moto, he walked away from all of us. So. Yeah, I was a little bit off with uh, with bike setup this the first moto, and you know, made a shock change for the second moto. And it was really good. So just trying to figure figure that out and fine tune everything has been kind of important for me. But yeah, just being in the battle and being up front, like it's a good feeling. Like in the moment, it's pretty intense. But like looking back on it now, like it was pretty fun battle. Like I enjoyed it. It's a little bit chaotic when you know they're they're swerving back and forth into each other, going down straightaways. You know, but. Uh, I mean, overall, it, it allowed me to get in there and, you know, break up the battle. So that's fun. And then, RJ, obviously, you're, you're pumped with his podium. I guess uh, we know you're a pretty gritty guy, but how bad are you hurting right now? Like, how is the wrist? Is it is it pretty sore after today? Yeah, to be honest, it sucks right now. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it's kind of just peeling the layers off. Like, no matter what, whenever I came back, it was going to hurt. Um, so just try to get through these two, um, let it recover a bit, it'll get better. Like it felt great leading up to this Saturday morning, like when I woke up, felt awesome. Um, and then yeah, kind of back to where we were and let it recover. Um, that's kind of where I'm at leading up to Charlotte. Like I feel like it'll definitely be better. I, I mean, I, I don't think I'll be 100%, but I'll be a lot closer than what I am right now. Um, I mean, I'd say that was probably 60, 70% today. Um, just for strength, like man, it's, it's hard to get that feeling back and then how notchy it was like, yeah, I was in a lot of pain. So, and also, I mean, a big shout out to like the guys because I haven't tested at all. Like, I literally showed up here on the weekends and we're changing things throughout the day. So, just putting a lot of um, trust in you know Hunter, our suspension guy, and um, kind of shows. Like, I, I was bummed like I didn't get to show how good our bike was coming into the season. Like, man, I felt awesome at Paula, and then just to sit on the couch, like, man, it sucked because I knew they put a lot into it. Um, so, just to come out here, like just as much as me doing that is for them to like it just goes to show how how much improvement our bike has made this year and i'm sure you want to do some more smx testing but i know when you started riding before buds creek that was what you were mainly riding right yeah yeah so i rode two days smx full super i i have more time on a supercross track right now than i do on motocross track i rode 30 minutes this week on an outdoor track and that was it so um my wrist honestly feels a lot better on the SMX style than outdoors. Um, so yeah, I'll back on SMX and uh, I feel I feel a lot more com comfortable on that. Yeah, so are you gonna be able to let the wrist heal up a little bit? Or are you gonna do much testing? I guess walk us through what those, like you mentioned, the two weeks is gonna look like. Well, that's the thing is last year I made, uh, I got lost coming into Charlotte where I was testing and went away from my settings and ended up, yeah, Charlotte I left 13th and not in a good spot so this year we're not going to change much i'm probably going to go racing all my supercross setting and just kind of tweak it here and there um but yeah for the most part i'm pretty happy with where i am all right, all right. i think that might wrap things up feels good good sophie you want you want in on this you got one i know you do there you go rj already answered this but my question then is for eli and chance you guys both have had um recent injuries so i'm curious if any of those are lingering still bothering you chance this is mostly in reference to your knee last year um but anything from your crash as well i mean yeah i need to build a little more endurance up for sure you know i mean one thing you miss is just like literally having calluses on your hands like my hands were like destroyed today just from not bracing and uh, not getting enough motos in i guess so little things like that and i need to definitely need a little more strength in, in my thumb yeah and uh my knee, my ACL is not fully torn. Um, I got a little bit in there still, but with the knee braces on, it's pretty stable. Um, I have kind of kinked it a little bit, like here and there, and it, it is pretty sore. But I mean, overall, like it's not swollen up after the weekends, and it's for the most part like it's the muscles around it are pretty strong, and the stabilizers are helping it out. So, I mean, other than that, like my ankle has probably been my my biggest issue right now. Just it's sore pretty much every weekend every time I ride still sore so but I mean other than that just 
I need to let time to, you know, let these things heal. But unfortunately, we don't really have time, so just kind of rolling with the punches with it. All right, got a thumbs up. That's gonna wrap it up. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for uh, hanging out with us for a little bit. And uh, we'll take a short break, and we'll be right back with our top guys. The KTM boy is gonna be coming up next. All right, we're gonna get things started as uh, Chase and Tom's mechanics are gonna go blow their bikes up. That's okay, they get to work on them, right? No. So reason to celebrate. Uh, AP will be joining us. Uh, he's a little uh, behind. He'll be in here eventually, I believe. But uh, we'll go ahead and start opening it up. Uh, Tom Vial, I'm gonna start with you, dude. Um, absolutely sensational moto number one. Uh, certainly challenged there in the second moto, but looking like reflecting on the pro moto season, you had some glimpses of greatness, but no nothing ever really kind of came to fruition for you. Today, a different story for Tom Vial. Yeah, I mean, I felt great um, the whole day on the track, and obviously the start is a big help when you start in front, especially in 250. A lot of guys can can win moto, and um, I've been close to win overall a, a few times this year, and I actually made a lot of mistakes, some small crash, and uh, I was pretty stressful. I was like, okay, I, I have, I need at least one, one win, and uh, I could make it happen today, so it was, it was really nice, yeah. Well, big congratulations to you. Uh, Chase Sexton, man, we'll move on to you, buddy. Uh, officially the 2024 champ, and uh, doing it in front of what you, like you said, hometown, uh, home track for you. Uh, that's gotta be even special, and on top of that, a little redemption for you here as well. Yeah. Um this, uh, this outdoor series has been uh, really good for me. I think my mechanics blowing my bike up right now, but uh, no, I, after Supercross being really down and struggling, um, I needed this outdoor series. And I knew when I got on the bike and outdoors, I'm like, man, I can, I can win on this bike. And um, automatically I felt comfortable. And I think this year I, I hit a new level and um, I definitely need it because uh, the competition's really stiff and um, yeah, I want to win championships. So, I uh, I expect myself to be in this position, and it's uh, it's not easy for sure. It's it's tough, and these outdoor series are <laughs> really hard to win because there's so many motos, so many opportunities to do good and also bad. So you got to be on your game. And uh, not gonna lie, I was pretty nervous today. Even though I had a 28 point lead, I just was more worried about stuff that I couldn't control more than what I could. So uh, yeah, glad to go uh, one one today, and it was a good track. Mitch Kendrick, Racer X, uh, let's talk with Tom. Obviously, last week you said you were pissed off that you hadn't won an overall. You get the overall. Is it kind of bittersweet knowing it came at the season finale and there's no more pro motocross races for this year? Yeah, no, last week I was actually on track. I was really good, riding good, and I start really bad both moto. And uh, we changed some stuff on the, with the clutch this week with the team. And uh, obviously, my start today was way better. I, I think I got two buff all shots. So, no, I mean, it's a big help when you start in front. Uh, you are out there in the in the lead. It's it's a big help uh, for me especially. So um, no, it was nice. I was a little bit stressful. I was like, okay, I need to win at least one. I feel like I've been close the whole year, but um, couldn't make it happen. And today was was the day. And then talk about that second moto battle with you and Hayden. You guys are going back and forth. I don't know if you guys actually hit into each other or not, but you guys are really close. Just the battling back and forth. It seemed like almost you know three or four turns in a row. It was like who's going to have the advantage? Yeah, like, that was just a lot of fun to watch. It, just walk us through it. It was pretty cool actually. Uh, we did like maybe two or three laps together, and uh, he passed me at the right after the mechanic, and I passed him back the, the next corner. And uh, yeah, it was it was a nice battle. I think I think the track is is nice for that. You can really change your line and. Um, it was cool. I got a little bit tired the last 10 minutes. Obviously, I, I really wanted to try to keep keep with Aiden, but uh, I got a little bit tired, and um, yeah, I couldn't do better than, than four in, in second moto. Uh, Chase, let's go to you here. Uh, you mentioned the 2022 season battling with Eli, how big that was for your pro motocross career. I don't think it's uh, been noted enough how uh, just you've taken such a huge step in pro motocross, like 250 days, I think you had like five overall podiums, one moto win, and then you had heat exhaustion that same day. Like, I know you had that huge uh, battle with Eli in 22. What else, like, how the hell did you get so good in pro motocross? Like, what did you do? Is there anything you can pinpoint to? Is it just a mentality change? Like, how did you improve so much? I really honestly don't know. Um, as you said, like, 250-wise, I was I won one, one moto. Uh, my best overall was a second, uh, going 7-2, I think. So, yeah, I was never really that great. I always felt like outdoors, like, I think it was just a flow thing. Like I didn't really gel with the, or I was trying too hard or something. 
And then 2022, I really found something uh, on the bike, and I battled Eli head to head all summer, and that was like the the kickstart of my uh, my outdoor career, I think. So um, last year, obviously, wasn't 100 percent, and was struggling, and then this year was kind of the <laughs> the icing on the cake for me. I I felt really good. I think I took my riding to a whole new level, and I think uh, it was needed because. I, uh, like I said, I want to win championships, and that's uh, what I needed. Yeah, we've watched you grow up uh, both phys phys physically and literally uh, as you've grown here now, pretty big guy. Do you feel like, because you mentioned the flow, do you feel like you just fit better on a 450 outdoors, and that's maybe what helped to it? Or was it just being thrown to the Wolves against Eli and really just either he was going to leave in the dust or he had to go with him? I think it's a little bit of a mixture. I think obviously I'm a bigger guy. Um, I fit the 450 better. I don't rev the bike that much. I don't ride it super erratic. So the 450 is better for me. Like I rode a 125 when I was like 15. Wasn't very good. I don't think, I don't know if you guys saw, I posted something on my Instagram about me riding a 125, but wasn't the greatest. So uh, yeah, I'm just not good at like really hanging it out and riding on that ragged edge, which you need to on a slower bike. So um, yeah, I think just the 450 suits me. And then also racing Eli taught me a lot racing jet last year so those two seasons kind of put together is what uh got you this uh outdoor series i think it's a credit to the teammate too you know he's got the best teammate in the world that's really nice of you to say that about tom yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah Andy, he's got two of the best teammates in the world and you know it's it's just uh i appreciate it guys thanks thanks for acknowledging that i got these two beat me during the week so i have to kind of come out here on the weekend i did I, I i let them know that i ran <laughs> faster lap time so i take credit for both these wins right here, both these W's right here, and uh, I told him I was faster, not not just faster, a whole second faster. We're not than sure them if this, this is week. actually true. It's true. Just trust me, it's true. And uh, yeah, that's that's why they went so so dang fast today. Did you guys have that lap time battle on each other's bikes yet, or is that coming this week? That that'll come when he's not scared to ride my bike. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that'll come soon. Yeah, and then uh, let's, let's stay with you, Aaron. Uh, obviously, a, fin a good finish to the season. We know you're one of the candidates for Motocross the Nations. I guess put your 30-second uh, elevator p uh, pitch out why you should be chosen for uh, Motocross the Nations. Yeah, man, I I um, <clears throat> I want to go. I want to go really, really bad, and, and I want to redeem myself for last year. Last year I had one good moto, and, and, uh, and then – blew it the second one so i need to uh redeem myself and and go over there and and actually have time to know we're going and and um have time to prepare for it so um i would love to go it's obviously not up to me but uh i was the third best guy the second best american all season so um I think I, yeah, I deserve to go. I, I think uh, we would we would definitely do some damage over there in England, uh, especially with the way the track is. Uh, I think it's, I've been told, it's a lot like Unadilla. Um, and I rode decent at Unadilla this year. So, um, so yeah, I think um, I think me and Chase and, and whoever else they pick will be a, a really, really good match. I heard rumors that they're not, they're not sure because that, People are saying your pride isn't very good. <laughs> I got more pride in my pinky toe than anybody else under the tent. <laughs> Scott Yarjo, Moto Now Blog. Chase, yesterday you mentioned some of the weaknesses on the bike for Supercross turned into strength, strengths outdoors here. Have you been riding or testing SMX at all, and how do you expect your bike to adapt uh, at, on the SMX style of tracks? Yeah, I think, like I said, I, the bike's really stable. Um, compared to what I got off of and got on, it was like two polar opposites. So it took me a lot to adjust. And then also the bike in outdoors feels completely different than the bike in Supercross, which I think now having this full outdoor series, now I can take that and turn it into a Supercross bike. That's what I'm hoping for. But I think, honestly, an SMX, with it being more outdoorsy, I think we're going to be pretty good. I think I haven't ridden SMX at all, but I messed around on it last week with my outdoor suspension, and I was actually able to do some of the rhythm sections, which I wouldn't have been able to do last year. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. These guys were both really good in SMX last year. So uh, I think the bike's pretty good. AP 
hunted me down at uh, Chicago, both motos. And, uh, yeah. So. Too bad I started 14th, though, so <laughs> 20 minutes ain't long enough to run somebody down. <laughs> yeah, so I think we're going to be good. I think uh, the bike suits SMX, and I'm looking forward to it. Dan Beaver, NBC Sports, for Tom. Uh, that second moto, that is probably the most aggressive I've seen you ride maybe ever. How hungry were you to get that 1-1 one, one when uh, Hayden pulled up against you, beside you? Yeah, of course, my goal was to, uh, to, I mean, to go 1-1. One, one. Um, I felt great the first four or five laps, and uh, I didn't really change my line from the first moto, and I, was, I had some struggle on some part of the track, and Hayden was faster on some part of the track, and I was faster on the other part of the track. So it was, it was tough. Um, I think Aiden finished 11 in the first moto, so I, he didn't really push, I think, the old moto. Maybe he was a little bit more fresh than everybody in the second one. Uh, obviously, when you do the first moto in front and you push for the win, it's, it's a little bit different than when you're like maybe 11. But no, overall, it was a good fight. I, I mean, Aiden is the guy to beat, so I'm, I was trying to uh, to hold him up, and um, I got a little bit tired at the end. But it was a nice uh, to finish the outdoor with the win. And um, we're going to go to the SMX, and uh, hopefully we can fight for the win there. And you've said a couple of times that you got a little tired towards the end. But did your mechanics let you know how safe you were getting the overall victory where second and third from the first moto? No, were? actually, actually, it didn't let me know anything. But I knew myself. Um, I know that Aiden was out, and I think I was also. So, and ARJ was also not really there for the overall. So I didn't see Levi the on moto. So I was like, OK, I, I got that normally. And uh, I think he let me know only two laps to go. So I was, he didn't let me know the old motto. Cool. And for Chase, uh, your two championships now look a lot similar. Uh, very strong endings to the season with a, a sweep of victories, both in Supercross in, what, 2023 and now, um, or whatever it was, uh, and then uh, this year. Um, is that a trait that uh, you knew you had? I normally uh, end seasons well. Um, just go looking back on my career, even in the 250 class, I wasn't winning, but I was getting on the podium. Um, I seem to just, I don't know, I like it when it gets harder and people start to get weaker. I think that's when I strive. And uh, yeah, Supercross, like I said, I think I won four out of the last six races. And then this series, um, yeah, I think it was six or seven, six in a row maybe. So. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like um, towards the end when people start to get a little more tired and I think I, uh, I excel. But also this year, I really put an emphasis on trying to fix the middle part because that's when I, where I struggled. I usually start good, middle is not the greatest, and I end good. But I need that middle part of the season to be better, and I was able to do that this year. I actually think I was, more, I was a lot better in the middle than I have been in uh, recent years. And that same trait, is that why you're better in, uh, uh, even stronger in Moto 2s than you are in Moto 1s? Yeah, I mean, today I was good in Moto 1. Thank, thank God. I needed it. I was pretty nervous. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty nervous before the first, first start because, yeah, I have a 28-point lead, but there's so many things that can happen, and <laughs> I wanted that thing done for the, for the, after the first moto. I didn't want to chance anything. Um, I think no one even told me what I could get. Not, the team didn't tell me. I had it in my head that I could get second and still win because I think that would make us tie if he went 1-1, but, or, yeah, I, I think I could have won if I got second. I had that in my head, but I'm like, I, I just want to go for the win. I, I felt good enough, so, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was good. But, yeah, the second motos, I think for me, um, yeah, it's hard. It's, it's not easy racing outdoors, and um, the second motos when people start to kind of uh, get tired, so. I think for me, how I ride and then also my fitness, it's kind of the best case scenario because I ride pretty uh, eco-friendly, you could say, and then um, I have good fitness. So, I, um, yeah, I like second motos. And thank you for clinching it in Moto1. I had your championship post locked and loaded and ready to, uh, to push. So I was glad to get that done halfway through the day. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that was over. <laughs> and AP, uh, strong last year in Super Motocross. Now you're ending uh, motocross on, with so much momentum. This is a chance to reset. Uh, what are your thoughts about going into these final three races? <clears throat> really, really good considering my starts. Uh, my starts have been awesome as of lately. And, uh, 
You could say I'm the best KTM on the starts. Well, who knows who's counting? Who's who's you know who's keeping track? But um, uh, now nah, I'm I'm feeling really really good, and <clears throat> I was I was just I was fast last year, but like I said, my starts were not there, and and uh, in Chicago I started 14th and 15th in both motos, and then came back up to fourth, and then uh, in Charlotte I almost did the same. I was like in 10th or so, and and then. Uh, LA we won't talk about the first race but the second race I um, started kind of up there and then I was working my way up and and uh, yeah it was, it's it's just too it's it's too quick of a moto to to try to come from the back um, with only 20 minutes so I'm I'm really uh, really stoked on my starts and I think I've got them figured out and uh, I think we do really have a good bike like chase was saying um for the smx and and uh yeah i think we're gonna really really do some damage in there aaron i know we already heard the elevator pitch i asked eli about destinations earlier and he basically said that you proved yourself as the second best guy today did you feel the last two weekends that it was a battle between you and him to prove yourself for that third spot Nah, maybe a little bit, but my battle was really Justin Cooper for the for the last you know four five races. Um, I knew I was getting close to him, and I he was the pre he was pretty much the one that I wanted to beat, and <clears throat> I knew I could do it. And getting third those last four races was was uh, or last three races or whatever it was. Um, was really really good for me and um yeah i i think when when he came back i i didn't really see him as too much of a threat because i knew he had been off the bike for so long but man he really really surprised me at bud's creek when he when he started running those laps and i was like i was getting nervous for a minute and then uh and then here man he he really really ripped that first moto and i said to him at the podium i was like man it's impressive that you can you can come back and in two races be up here so it's uh yeah it was it was cool to see him come back and and um yeah i'm i'm pumped to uh to have beat him today <laughs> aaron we'll stay with you uh obviously you've been close to that supercross win last year then you got it this year uh you started pro motocross pretty well last year you got better this year ended on a strong note I guess, you know, you're aging like fine wine, I guess, as you get older. <laughs> do you feel like same bike next year, same program? Do you feel like you're going to be even better next year? Like, you still have room to grow? I do. I think so. Um, I was talking to my buddy about this. It's, it's almost like my amateur career. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't go pro until I was about 18. And, uh, and I got better and better and better. So um, I like to think of it as that. And uh, I think... I'm pretty sure there's still room to room to improve. Uh, I feel good. I felt this year was the best I've felt so far in my career, and and I think I've had the best races in my career this year. So, um, yeah, biggest thing I want to work on next year is just consistency and um, ending the year, <laughs> ending the motocross season like I did was uh, was a good start to it. So, um, yeah, I think I definitely think there's room to grow. Uh, there's room to get better. There's always room to improve. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to work on it. And then, Chase, obviously the first motos the last couple weeks has been where you've struggled and Hunter's been better. I guess did you have a different approach this weekend or was it, you know, just I want to get this thing wrapped up? Did you, I guess, walk us through, like, how did you just right off the bat start it off so much better this weekend? <laughs> yeah, I had, uh, I was over here and Aaron saying he ran a 150 last week at uh, Baker's <laughs> Factory. So I'm like, ah, I'm just going to get a good start. The truth. <laughs> We're not sure on that. But, uh. No, I think today I was running a lot off adrenaline, and I wanted to win. Um, obviously, clinching the first moto because I just, like I said, I didn't want to take that risk going into second race. So um, I think this track really suits me. It's got those long ruts, um, and it's pretty – it's technical, but also you can be really creative on the track with line choice. So I don't know. I've always liked this race. Um, so I just really wanted to go out there and kind of put a – a stamp on on this year and uh the first moto was was really good we had a good pace going i think we had more in the tank because second moto we went like two seconds a lot faster so um yeah it was uh it was good and like i said it was two two hard motos racing ap today he was uh 
I knew when I got up got up this morning he was already talking crap. My like, yeah, it's he's uh, he's feeling himself today, so we're gonna have to put up with that. But yeah, it was uh, it was good, and yeah, the the team's doing awesome. So yeah, the first moto just adrenaline, honestly. And then uh, to be able to stamp it off like you did with one one here, kind of in the Midwest, kind of near your home. You know, it's not out in California, miles and miles away. I guess is it? Did you have a lot of family and friends here, and what was it like being able to do it somewhere that is kind of familiar? A lot of uh, a lot of friends, a lot of family. That adds to the pressure. You come here and you, uh, if you suck, it's it's not good. It's a long way home, and you just have you feel guilty for all these people coming here and you don't perform. So uh, a lot of pressure, added pressure, and um, yeah, it, it was good. I love having people here. It's nice to see familiar faces because I don't get to see a lot of people from where I grew up a lot because I'm training in Florida. Um, so it, it's it's pretty special. And uh, yeah, I, I love coming back here. Red Bud is obviously my home race because I grew up riding there. I rode two GNCCs here. Um, maybe me and Aaron will have to come come back and uh, settle it. But uh, no, it, it's it's cool to come race here. And this track is, is really uh, one of a kind and awesome. Yeah, and so you've, for you and Aaron, you guys have raced here a couple years now. What did you think of the track changes, the new start, the wood section, just a little bit different layout this year? Yeah, I mean, uh, they are pretty wild, for sure. Uh, no, it was it was really good. I, I thought the track changes were good, even though um, I thought the track was the absolute best in 2015 when it first when it was first built. It was the best layout ever. Obviously, they can't go back to that, but I'm just throwing that out there. What'd you get that year? One one. No, two one, two one. But you know. Yeah, I, uh, honestly, the wood section is cool. Uh, it's hard to see. It felt like I was back at uh, there's this track in Southern Illinois that I used to race at uh, Lincoln Trail. That is like literally what it felt like back there. I was I felt really at home. I thought Aaron might put the bark busters on for uh, for the races today, but uh, about to. And he was really good back there. It was it was no joke. He was fast in that section. So I, it uh, it was a cool cool track. The changes are cool. The start is a typical MXGP start. I feel like. I mean, I never raced them. Tom would know more about that, but it seems more like MXGP type start. So, um, yeah, I don't know if there's uh, any release on where does Nations is next year, but. <laughs> Here would be pretty good, man. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's, I would uh, say. track was good. All right. I think that's going to wrap things up. Sounds like we're going to see AP and Chase Sexton at Ironman GNCC in October. Love to hear that. Throw the Barkbusters on there. That's going to put you guys <laughs> pressures on. Tom, you come to it. You'll have a fantastic time. Uh, that is going to wrap things up for us. Uh, thank you guys for, for hanging out. little KTM special right there. And thank you guys for hanging out here. Uh, in the tent. That is going to wrap things up. Peace.